Here we're going to look at a nice problem involving a rational function in three variables. So our goal is to show that for all distinct integers x, y, and z, this expression right here is an integer. So let's dive into this expression. We have x to the n over x minus y times x minus z. We have y to the n over y minus z times y minus x. And then finally, we have z to the n over z minus x times z minus y. Before we look at this problem, let's maybe investigate the two variable version to see if that gives us any sort of intuition for how this thing will go. So I think the two variable version will go something like this. We'll have x, y, and in integers distinct such that x to the n over x minus y plus y to the n over y minus x is an integer. So in other words, we want to show that that is an integer. But as you can see, this is actually not so hard to do. We can find a common denominator between these. But essentially, that just involves multiplying this thing by a minus 1 and this then switching this x minus y with, or y minus x with x minus y. Then we can write this as x to the n minus y to the n over x minus y. But then this numerator has a well-known factorization. We can take it and factor out an x minus y, and then we're left with x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 2 times y plus all the way up to x times y to the n minus 2 plus y to the n minus 1. And this is all still over x minus y. Now we can take the advantage of the fact that we've got an x minus y in the numerator and the denominator to cancel those things off. And then what we're left with is just a combination of integers, which means clearly we have an integer here. So the two variable version seems to be pretty easy. So let's maybe get rid of this and we'll dive into the three variable version. We just got done proving a two variable version of this problem. Now we're ready to look at the main problem, which is in our case a three variable version. Although I think you could probably easily extend this to an arbitrary number of, number of variables. Okay, so first off what I want to do is combine these by finding a common denominator. So it's pretty clear that my denominator will be x minus y, x minus z, and y minus z. So let's maybe make sure we have a common denominator. We'll have x minus y times x minus z times y minus z. And then we'll build up each part of these three terms so that we have that common denominator. So that means this term, x to the n, will need to be multiplied by y minus z. Plus, this term right here, y to the n, will need to be multiplied by, let's see, it'll be x minus z, but then a minus one because this y minus x is off by a sign. So I'll write this as x minus z, and then I'll change this plus to a minus just to take advantage of that. And then next, we see that each of these is out of order, picking up a minus one for each of them, but that'll cancel out, so that's actually good to go. So we can write the rest of this as z to the n times, well, whatever's missing here, which is x minus y, like that. Okay, so our goal expression is equivalent to this after we've combined everything together. Now, next up, I wanna rearrange the numerator so that it's a little bit easier to work with. I'm gonna rearrange it as follows. And so this is pretty easy to do just by expanding and then refactoring some terms. So we can write this as z to the n minus x to the n times y and then plus x to the n minus y to the n times z, and then finally plus y to the n minus z to the n times x. Okay, great. And then all of this is still over this x minus y, x minus z times y minus z. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give this numerator a name. Maybe I'll call this numerator f of x, y, z, and let's write this out real quick. We have z to the n minus x to the n times y plus times z plus y to the n minus z to the n times x. And then we'll hold on to this for safekeeping for the next step. And then furthermore, maybe I'll call this thing right here 
capital F of X, Y, Z. So in fact, what we really want to do is show that this capital F of X, Y, Z is an integer for all distinct X, Y, and Z. Okay, so let's clean up the board and then we'll tackle this problem with this new setup. So on the last board, we reduced this problem a little bit to something that's a little bit maybe easier to work with. And that is showing that this rational function, capital F of X, Y, Z, which is equal to this multivariable polynomial, little f x, y, z, over this term right here is an integer for all distinct integers x, y, and z. So I'm going to start off by fixing two distinct integers. So let's write it like this. We'll fix y naught and z naught integers, and like I said, they will be distinct. Now that we fixed these two integers, I want to consider the following one variable polynomial. And that one variable polynomial will be f of x, y naught, z naught. So let's just go ahead and point out that this is a polynomial in only x. Next up, what I want to notice is that f of y naught, y naught, z naught is equal to zero. And that just easily follows by our structure of f of x, y, z. y naught and z naught were arbitrary. So let's maybe go ahead and point th that out. So y naught and z naught are not only distinct, but they have been fixed arbitrarily. So what that means is that this statement right here is true for infinitely many choices of y naught and z naught. But what does that tell us? That tells us that our polynomial f of x, y naught, z naught can factor as x minus y naught times g of x. And this is gonna be true for all y naught. And again, this is gonna be true for all of our choices of y naught and z naught. So let's see what we've got going on here. We have this single variable polynomial is equal to this factored single variable polynomial for infinitely many choices of y naught. But the fact that we have infinitely many times that this polynomial is equal to this polynomial and a polynomial can be completely determined by a finite number of points and that number is one more than the degree of that polynomial, well, that means that this equality holds for all values of y and z. So we can rewrite that as f of x, y, z equals x minus y times g of x, y, z, where I've just relabeled g so that it's a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so let's maybe bring that up and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we just got done showing that our multivariable polynomial f of x, y, z can be factored as x minus y times g of x, y, z. But now there wasn't really anything special about x minus y in that. You could also make the same argument to factor out an x minus z and a y minus z, given the structure of our polynomial here. Similarly, we'll have f of x, y, z is equal to x minus z times g, I'll call it 1, of x, y, z. And then finally, f of x, y, z is equal to y minus z times g of 2x, y, z. Finally, since these three polynomials are relatively prime to each other, we know that that implies that we can actually write this numerator, f of x, y, z, as a product of these three linear terms times a new polynomial. So I'll write this as f of x, y, z equals x minus y times x minus z times y minus z times a new polynomial, which I'll call h of x, y, z. Finally, inserting this expression for f of x, y, z up here into our expression for the rational function, capital F of x, y, z, we see that capital F of x, y, z will equal to little h of x, y, z, where this is a polynomial, where we have canceled these x minus y, x minus z, and y minus z with the denominator. 
But again, that cancellation only really makes sense when we have distinct x, y, and z. So that's how we can add this here for distinct x, y, z. But again, all of this was happening in terms of polynomials with integer coefficients. So that tells us that this is going to be an element from the integers. And that's a good place to stop.